Hey there! Today we're going to have a look at this pen. It's the Visconti Breeze, which is rather a nice, interesting, clean, fresh looking pen. They do. Uh, it's pretty new and what I like about this is that it has a number of very vibrant finishes you can choose from. This is the Mandarin and it is rather nice. So I'm going to cover the parts of this pen. I'll do a writing sample. I'll tell you what I like about it, what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, so the Visconti Breeze, but before we get into the pen, let's first get into the box. First of all, uh, there is this white cardboard outer sleeve and you know how much I absolutely adore these. So then we have this and this is a black in-between sleeve. What would we call this? It's not an inner bit of packaging. It's not the outer bit of packaging. Let's call this the Perry sleeve. Uh, that is of course P-E-R-I sleeve, not P-E-R-R-Y sleeve. In other words, a sleeve called Perry. No, this is the in-between Perry sleeve. Uh, what I do like is that it has the Visconti logo and it has the V, which you can see clearly here, which is your finger hole to push out that box, which is a nice eye for detail, I must say. Then we have this little foam rubbery uh, thing, which is very useful. You can take one of those silver metallic markers and write do not disturb on here, put this on your door. Another lovely accessory from Visconti. We have the international warranty, which accordions open, and then we have this plastic sleeve, which is incredibly noisy, so I'm going to try to not touch this and just put it out of the way in case you are wearing headphones. Then we have this box, and the Breeze sleeps in there like this. Okay, the Breeze interesting pen is very much, let me zoom in, is very much a Rembrandt style pen um, and the get a room or stay still. Okay. Very much a Rembrandt type pen. So here we have the Rembrandt on top, we have the Breeze, and then we have the Lamy Safari as a size comparison. As you can see, they are roughly similarly sized pens. The Breeze costs 100 euros, has fine, medium or steel nibs, cartridge converter filled, comes in a bunch of different cool finishes and uh, was sent to me by, or was lent to me, I should say, by Joost Appelbaum of Appelbaum Penna. So th that is kind of nice. Uh, these pens also have a magnetic closure in the cap, that is why they are so attracted to each other, because they clearly cannot keep their caps off each other. So let's put this Rembrandt away and let's continue with the breeze. Let me, let me cover the parts for you. On top here we have this metal thing that we have seen on other models from Visconti, like indeed the Rembrandt, right? Uh, so this is the continuation of the clip. We have the clip, which people typically love or hate. I kind of like it. Supposed to be indestructible, it is spring-loaded, and this is the very attractive Mandarin finish. There are other colors that you can get this pen in as well. A large metal center band which says, breeze, breeze, breeze. Uh, yes, right. Then we have the barrel, which um, I think tapers down just ever so slightly and ends in a little metal dot right there. The metal dot. There we go. Magnetic closure, as I said, section is matching to the barrel. That, in my mind, is always bonus points. If you look at the Rembrandt, for example, that has a metal section, which not everybody enjoys can get a little slippery, but I think this is rather nice. Plus, this is a very nice material. I'm assuming an acrylic, but it looks really neat. You can pose the pen if you want to, becomes rather large, but you can if you want to. And then we have the nib. <clears throat> and on these new steel style Visconti nibs, uh, you have these two little circles. Uh, the two little circles indicate a medium nib, one circle indicates a fine nib, and three circles indicates a broad nib. It says uh, Visconti Italy. And then here at the bottom we have the feed, which is plastic. As you can see, I now have a black background. I'm trying to use that to see if that uh, makes the metering of the camera a little better, makes it a little less overexposed. We'll see how that works out. Okay. 
The pen is fed by a cartridge converter filled system. In this case, comes with a converter, which is rather nice. And um, that's pretty much all there is to it. So let me just grab some paper. Now I was trying to find an ink that matched the finish of the pen a little bit. And unfortunately that means I've used a somewhat yellowish ink. So let's hope this shows up. We have the Visconti Breeze here with a fine steel nib and diamine. Um, sunset yellow, sunshine yellow. I want to write sunset yellow. I'm probably wrong. I'm sorry, but look it up. And if you really need to ask me what it was. So the first thing you may notice, and I'll shut up for a second. is that this is a noisy nib. It is a nib with a large amount of feedback. This is not a smooth nib and I also will say I'm not sure how much of a, uh, a medium nib this really is because it kind of strikes me as a fine nib even though it is marked medium. Um, but that to me is not the biggest issue. There are other companies that have nibs that occasionally are a little broader than you would expect or a little uh, wider than you would expect, a little finer than you would expect. My biggest issue is the feedback, because I do actually find this unpleasant. This is a scratchy nib. So I'm, I'm, I'm not super impressed by this. I have found that the pen is very picky. If I really hold it in this specific position, I'm writing the specific position, it is least scratchy. But if I deviate a tiny bit from that, it already loses its its relative smoothness, but even in that in that specific position, the sweet spot on this nib is pretty small, and it gets scratchy very quickly, uh, which is not very pleasant, right? Even in a hundred euro pen, I know that relatively speaking, it's not expensive for a Visconti, but I would expect a little bit more than this, to be fair. Okay, wetness, not the world's wettest writer. Line variation, as always, we are very, very careful. You can squeeze out a little bit, but it's not a flex nib, nor is it advertised as such, so be very, very careful. Finally, reverse writing is not possible. As you can see, and I'm just going to hold this close to my eyes, no, because I'm using a yellowish ink, but it's not even that the ink is barely visible. There are a few spots where I can see a tiny bit of ink, but it basically does not write upside down. So don't buy this to get a finer nib when you revert it. Okay, there you have it. Interesting pen. Let's see what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Okay, sorry. What do I like and not like about the Breeze? Well, I like the price. It's hard to argue with that. 100 euros, I know that's not cheap. I know you can buy $2 pens on eBay from China. I know all that, but this is Visconti, okay? As Viscontis go, some Viscontis are 10,000 euros or more. So I think 100 euros is not terrible for this brand. I like that. The finishes are all cool. I checked out a bunch from Applebaum's website. They're cool. They are cool, and I really, really enjoy that. So this yellow orange, I had a, I had a noodles Ahab that looked a bit like this, uh, this finish, and I really like it. Except this one, nope, doesn't have the noodles smell. So that some some people could be a, a benefit here. Fun, vibrant, interesting finishes. Maybe aiming at a slightly younger crowd, and I'm not saying that that only young people can use this. What I'm saying is, this would be a cool pen to give your nephew or your niece or whatever who's trying to get into pens, etc. Because it's fun, and that that I, I really enjoy that that um, the finish, but also the fact that it's a relatively light pen. So you could give this to a child or a younger adult, maybe a, you know adolescent, and they would be able to use it. It's not too heavy. It's not too big. It's actually a pretty nice size for that. So I like all of those things. Things I don't like so much. Uh, that lightness that goes two ways. It can also make a pen feel a little cheap and flimsy. 
I found that on the uh, Penator, for example. I, I reviewed some Penator at some point, and that was very light. This pen comes pretty close, so it feels very light, and that may make it feel a little cheap. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's just my opinion, of course, as all of this is. Now we have something that I would say is maybe a bit more objective. This center band is rather large. I don't really care about the design aesthetic. I could have lived very well with this pen without having that band. But given that it has threads under it, I don't think it's necessarily a bad idea to have that center band because it, it actually contains the threads. So now you have metal threads on metal threads, which means that your acrylic won't wear out, uh, which is kind of nice. My only issue is not so much the aesthetics, because that is a very personal thing. It's more so that I feel this band when I hold the pen. So I have to hold it really close to the end there to not feel the metal, because it is a little sharp. And it, to me, it gets annoying writing with this for a while if I don't hold it properly. Now, the good thing is, when you post it, it's quite long. You can use it without much issue, and then I don't really feel that band. So that's not really a big deal. My biggest issue is that this nib has a lot of feedback. And Visconti and nibs, man, man, it's confusing. <clears throat> In the same batch of pens that Applebaum lent me, I got these two pens on top of Visconti Rembrandt and at the bottom a Visconti Breeze. Now, both of these have medium nibs. It's the same steel medium nib. I mean, it's the same nib with the same finish, the same pattern on it. The Rembrandt medium writes like a fine, and the Breeze medium writes like a medium. But then the Rembrandt has a little bit of feedback, and the Breeze has a lot of feedback, even though there seems to be a bit more tipping. Yeah, okay, I, I don't know if the camera will really pick this up, but, but with the naked eye, look at it. I'm sorry, just hit the camera, I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm a bit of an idiot. Look at the tipping, you can just see that that Breeze has more tipping. There simply is more. You can see it with the naked eye. It's a little broader. If there is more tipping, there's more material to polish. If there's more material to polish, then why is this more feedbacky than this? It drives me insane sometimes. Because I like Visconti. I like this. My first real pen was a Visconti. Like serious pen with a gold nib and all that stuff. Make it consistent, please. It would make everyone's lives so much easier. Hashtag despair. But that's all I can do. So I've now pointed this out again. Please. There you go. The Visconti Breeze. Guys, I hope this review was useful. A very kind thank you to Applebaum. If you want the Breeze, don't forget that my website gives you a 10% discount. Go to my website, click the banner, you'll find out how it works. And if you're overseas, you don't have to pay the 21% VAT either. So 100 euros minus 21% VAT minus 10% SBRE Brown discount. Now we're talking. Maybe. So if you want one, consider that. I hope this was useful. Joost, thanks for lending me the pen. I really appreciate it. Guys, I'll gladly see you later. Bye-bye.